Today is a very special day because we're about to prove Ramanujan's Master Theorem, which is a pretty cool trick for solving definite integrals involving Mellin transforms. And I've made a couple of videos solving integrals using this theorem, but I'm yet to make a video proving it. And the proof I'm about to present you is the exact same proof Ramanujan provided himself for this theorem he was so fond of. Now, first things first, what does this theorem actually say? Well, if you want the Mellin transform of a function f of x, and the Mellin transform is a function of a parameter s, and is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times the function f of x dx, and the type of function to which the theorem applies is a very specific one. The function f of x needs to be expandable as an infinite series in a very particular manner. I'm talking about a sum over the non-negative integers k of negative x to the k divided by k factorial times phi of k, where phi here is an analytic function. Yeah, kind of a very specific Maclaurin-like series. So if you have this kind of function, then its Mellin transform sorts out to gamma function evaluated at s times the function phi evaluated at negative s. And the assumptions provided by Ramanujan for his proof are as follows. The first assumption being that you need a function expandable in this form. The second one is that the function f of x needs to be continuous on the right half of the real line. And the third assumption being that you want the s parameter to be positive. And finally, you want x to the s times f of x to approach 0 as x tends to infinity. And the thing about Ramanujan's proof is that these assumptions are not all that strong. And there's a much better, more rigorous proof provided by the legendary G. H. Hardy. And I'll present you that proof in a separate video. For now, we're going to talk about Ramanujan's approach because it is pretty interesting in itself. So Ramanujan begins his proof with the integral i sub 1, defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times e to the negative t x dx, where t is a positive real number. And I've made use of this integral plenty of times as well. It closely resembles the gamma function, and with one substitution, it'll turn into the gamma function. We're going to let tx equal to u, which implies that dx equals du by t, and this means that i sub 1 is now the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the s minus 1 by t to the s minus 1 times e to the negative u du by t. So we can take out of this integral the constant multiple that is 1 by t to the s, and we have the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the s minus 1 times e to the negative u du, which we immediately recognize as the gamma function. So that means the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times e to the negative tx dx equals t to the negative s times gamma s. Now, for any positive real number t, we can find another positive real number r, such that t equals r to the k, where k is an integer. That means we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times e to the negative r to the k times x dx equal to r to the negative s times k times gamma s. Okay, cool, but now what? Well, I'm about to throw into the mix another function. So that function would be g, and what do we know about g? Well, nothing except for the fact that it's analytic. And that's pretty much enough information for us because the function g being analytic means we can expand it as a Taylor series centered at some real number a in the domain of the function g. Now, what do the coefficients of the Taylor series look like? Well, they would be g order k derivative at a divided by k factorial times h to the k, where h is the distance from a. So I want to take these coefficients 
and multiply the whole equation by them and sum the whole thing over the non-negative integers k. Okay, that sounds interesting. So what does that give me? Well, I'm going to evaluate the right and left hand sides separately and see what we get. So for the right hand side, which is the easy part of the work, we have the sum over k of g order k derivative at a times h to the k divided by k factorial times r to the negative s times k times gamma s. Now the gamma s term is independent of the index variable k, so we can treat it as a constant multiple of the sum, and we have the sum over the non-negative integers k of g order k derivative at a times Notice that both h and r to the negative s has, have been raised to the kth exponent. So that means we have h r to the negative s to the k, and this is being divided by k factorial. Now, what is this infinite series expansion? Well, that would be the Taylor series for g evaluated at a plus h times r to the negative s. So that means we have gamma s times g at a plus h times r to the negative s. And now we introduce a new function or new notation for the function anyway. That is phi of s being g of a plus h times r to the s. So that means what you have here is in fact gamma s times phi of negative s, that's the right hand side, and it's in complete agreement with what we wrote out earlier in the video, or at the beginning of the video, that is, when I stated the master theorem, all that's left is to now evaluate the left hand side and see if everything checks out. Now for the left hand side, first notice that we can take these coefficients inside the integration operator because they're all independent of the x variable, meaning that we have the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times g order k derivative at a by k factorial times h to the k times e to the negative r to the k x integration with respect to x. And now for something very interesting, we're going to introduce another series expansion by expanding the exponential function. Yeah, we have e to the x, and we can expand this as the sum over the non-negative integers n of x to the n by n factorial, meaning that e to the negative r to the k x can be expanded as the sum over n of negative r to the k times x to the n by n factorial, and we can write this further as the sum over n of negative x to the n times r to the k times n divided by n factorial. And this negative x to the n part is quite encouraging. Continuing with our calculations, we have the sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times g order k derivative at a by k factorial times h to the k times the sum over n of negative x to the n times r to the k times n divided by n factorial integration with respect to x. Wow. Now all of this junk can be taken inside the sum with respect to n operator because they're independent of the index variable n. So we have the sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over n of x to the s minus 1 times g order k derivative at a by k factorial times h, uh, h to the k times r to the k times n times negative x to the n by n factorial dx. Now for the part where Hardy probably decided that, okay, the assumptions aren't going to be enough, we are going to switch up all of these operators and write this as the integral from 0 to infinity 
of the double sum over first n then k of all of that stuff. And I'm just going to write out the obvious now. That is the integral from 0 to infinity. And this term here is independent of both index variables k and n. So we have x to the s minus 1. And we have the sum over n of what exactly? Well, that would give me a negative x to the n by n factorial term. And yeah, I guess that's it. Then we have the sum over k of g order k derivative at a times h times r to the n all to the k and this whole thing is going to be divided by k factorial and of course we're integrating with respect to x. So what exactly is this thing? Recall from our previous introduction of notation this thing here would be g of a plus h r to the n and we introduced the phi notation over here, so that would be phi of n. Okay, cool. So that means we now have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times the sum over n of, terribly sorry about that, negative x to the n times phi of n divided by n factorial dx. That's what your left-hand side evaluates out to. And now combining the results, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the s minus 1 times the sum over the non-negative integers n of negative x to the n times phi of n divided by n factorial dx equal to the gamma function evaluated at s times phi at negative s. And that's the proof presented by Ramanujan, which was pretty cool. I must admit that this is very cool proof. And if you're interested in some examples of this theorem, well, I have a couple of videos linked in the description, linked in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.